be here, and Lisa and I were just chatting about why both of us moved from other states and other places in the world to Portland, Oregon, and uh, Powell's Books was one of the one things that we could both agree on. It's a fantastic city, and these kind of boards are part of the reason that I'm so happy to be a citizen. When I first learned about genetically modified food, it was probably, I think, five to seven years ago. And I thought when I heard GM Foods that General Motors had come out with a new product. <laughs> I mean, literally, I was clueless as to what it was for me. Is It's not only a moral issue, it becomes very political when you start to realize how much money is behind the industry of genetically modified food. So I was thrilled when I learned that we not only have a local expert in our field here, we have a nationally renowned expert. Lisa Weasel, of course, is here with us. She's re the recipient of a grant from the National Science Foundation to study the issue of genetically modified foods. She's a tenured professor of biology at PSU in Oregon, and she's a member of Governor Ted Kulagoski's task force on developing public policy for biopharmaceutical use and crops here in Oregon. Hi, Lisa, first of all. Thanks for being here with us tonight. Okay. Thanks for having me. So you come from this from a scientific point of view. As a molecular biologist, you obviously started researching this book about science, but it has all those other aspects to it. It has politics, it has greed, it has corporate vehemence. Did you know you were about to write a Grisham thriller when you were writing this book? <laughs> well, I have to say, uh, it, it surprised me the level to which politics really infiltrated the, the discourse and the trade in genetically modified food and the way that it's entered our food supply. So I think by focusing solely on the science, we really miss out on some of the really important issues around our food, what it is, and how genetically modified foods got their start. Sure. So genetically modified food usually refers to plants that are transgenic. That is, they're made in the laboratory by transferring a gene from one species into a food plant. So it's a gene that would never occur there naturally, through natural crossing pollination. Um, so these genes typically encode things like pesticides, herbicide tolerance, pharmaceutical drug compounds uh, that the plant then expresses. And so the first question I think on everybody's mind, and I think the audience would probably agree, is it safe? I think it's, it's a really hard uh, question to answer. Give a blanket statement, are genetically modified food safe for two reasons? The first reason is that genetically modified food encompasses huge spectrum of different kinds of plants, different kinds of genes, different kinds of traits that can be put into plants. Some might have a greater likelihood of safety, others might have a huge risk associated with them. So to try to come up and say genetically modified foods are safe on the whole is very difficult for this fact. We need genetically modified foods in the first place. Well, the genetically modified foods that are currently commercially available were really designed benefit and to fit into a large-scale industrial agricultural system. If you look at the crops that they're put in, in the first place, soy, corn, cotton, canola, now sugar beets are coming up. They're large industrial uh, agricultural crops that fit a, a very large-scale farming model. Uh, the currently available genetically modified traits have all been developed by private industry, and there's obviously been a significant profit motive behind them. Okay, so the name that we always hear is Monsanto. Yeah. Talk about who Monsanto is, what their profit margin is like, and what their end game is. Well, it's a very relevant question because today Monsanto just announced that their uh, profits have doubled in this economic climate. It's rare to see a company whose profits are doubling. Uh, that's coupled with, at the same time, we're seeing uh, 963 million people in the world that are going hungry. So we have to ask the question, what's going on here? Um, Monsanto got their start as a Cold War chemical company, and then they entered the genetically modified seed business as a way to branch into agriculture. Um, the, the primary GM food crop that's grown today is a herbicide tolerant variety, or herbicide tolerant variety, of um, that are engineered to specifically be able to withstand Monsanto's herbicide, their weed killer, Roundup. So that allows farmers to put huge amounts of Roundup on the fields, the food crops will still grow up, and the weeds will grow. For large-scale agriculture, it's a labor-saving technology. So they Roundup over the fields. This was the, the uh, statistic that just floored me. In 2008, 80% of all corn, 92% of all soybeans grown in the U.S. were products of genetic engineering 
Yet according to the Pew Research Foundation, 60% of Americans believe they've never eaten a morsel that's been genetically modified. Now, why the disconnect? Well, I think the question is how would people know that they're eating genetically modified food? We don't have any food labeling. There hasn't been any kind of consumer education campaign to let people know the reality, the scientific reality, the truth about genetically modified food. So I think that the, it's not necessarily an issue of people being passively accepting of it or being illiterate. There really hasn't been a lot of mechanism for American consumers to learn about genetically modified food, to become educated about what they're eating. So I remember hearing about the issue over in France of frankenfoods and, and this label that they gave to genetically modified foods. But my understanding was that came about after mad cow disease. So how are the two related? So as I, as I talk about in my book, um, in Europe there's a very different relationship to food, different relationship to science and technology as well. Here we tend to celebrate science and technology. Europeans have a more conflicted relationship to science and technology. Historically speaking, um, so uh, in Europe, genetically modified foods are labeled because consumers actively are rejected these foods. And even now, I was very when I went to do my research in Europe, I was very interested to get some photos of the labels on GM foods because they make various PowerPoint presentations and show these labels. No labels to be found. Oh, I thought that there was labeling of GM foods, uh, but consumers just absolutely do not want these products, so supermarkets don't. Them. The connection to mad cow disease, yes, that made people in Europe more sensitive to food safety issues, but the issue is much bigger than that. It's a complicated story that's in this book. How was it that Europeans became aware of genetically modified foods and educated about it in a way that Americans haven't been able to? I think that because of mad cow disease and because of the attention to um, food issues there, also, it's a primarily American technology. Syngenta is one of the major GM seed producing companies based in Switzerland, but largely it's an American phenomenon that was exported to Europe. So when the first soybean, genetically modified soybean exports came into Europe, activists were ready to let the public know about it. There's also been significant differences in the media coverage on genetically modified foods in Europe versus the media. The, our relationship to food here is very different. As one of my interview uh, interviewees in the book, one of the European uh, people that I interviewed said, well, if Americans are willing to eat McDonald's special sauce, of course they don't care if it's genetically modified. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think that we do have a particular relationship to food that we're, is changing now, and Portland's probably the leading edge of some of those changes, becoming more aware of what's in our food. We've had recent food scandals with people alive with melanie. People are starting to think more about food and how it's produced. Or people, do you eat genetically modified foods? <laughs> Well, I think all of us have eaten genetically modified foods because they're in soy, corn, any processed food, unless it's marked organic, labeled organic, even then it can still have five up to 5% genetically modified content. So you go out to eat at a restaurant, you're probably going to get some genetically modified food in your people coming together, committing to a cause, and saying, I'm going to stand up, I don't want this. Um, 